What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and this video is gonna be all about dumping data out of a MongoDB database from a NoSQL injection in a Node.js application. To start things off, we're just gonna use the Stalker machine from Hack the Box because all you have to do is spin it up and then go to dev.stalker.hdb and you get access to a prompt that is SQL injectable or NoSQL injectable. So let's test this out. If we do admin admin and send this over to Burp Suite and look at the request, we can see a uh, login failure just leads to login error. So this is the string we wanna look for that we know the connection didn't work. But first we should identify this is a Node.js application and you can do that either by the cookie, the connect.sid is a giveaway. Also this X powered by Express is a huge giveaway. And I keep emphasizing Node.js just because MongoDB is super common with Node.js applications because most developers start with the mean framework, which is MongoDB, uh, Express, Angular, and Node. So let's just test for SQL injection. And to do that, we should convert this over to a JSON request from XWW form URL encoded, because when it is JSON, we can inject an object easier. And that is one of the requirements to do this NoSQL injection. So I'm just converting this payload by hand to JSON and then we're going to send it and we get login error. That is good. We're gonna send invalid JSON, just to see how the application behaves. And we see it's definitely going to be parsing JSON. Hopefully you don't see a full stack trace on a production server because this does leak sensitive information like ver dub 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 dev, but um, I digress. So let's inject an object. So we're gonna make the parameter um, NE, which in MongoDB, this NE is not equals. So I'm gonna say not equals to admin, and we're going to copy that for the password. So now we're saying, let me log in whenever the username and password does not equal admin, and it lets us into the application, which is great, we've logged in. But what if we wanted to get data out of this application? We can't just bypass authentication, but we can use this kind of as Boolean logic with the regular expression uh, modifier for this. So if we instead of did NE, we did regex, we can just write a regular expression here and when it matches, we'll log in. So if I just did A, it's going to work if there's an A in any of the usernames, which isn't really that helpful. Same with O, like this is just matching if it exists in any username. But since this is regex, we could insert this, char this caret, which is this character starts with, so now starts with O is failing. But if we did starts with A, it succeeds. So then we can just script out and do A, B, A, C, and go to until we get another valid character. And then just go down the list until we get this entire regex. So this is easily scriptable. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm going to show some ways to optimize it because if we did uh, zero through nine, A through Z, lowercase, A through Z, uppercase, that can take quite a while to go through that whole key space. And you can get through that and just like six to seven requests as long as you do some optimization. So we'll show that at the very end of the video. But first, a word from a sponsor, which is gonna be Sneak. If you just go to sneak.co slash ipsec, you can do me a huge favor. And when you sign up to Sneak, because I know you're going to want to sign up to it after this, um, I'll get credit for bringing you to the product. And to show the product, let's just analyze the source code of this website for it to find vulnerabilities, right? And I've already rooted the box. Um, you can see in this pane, root at stalker. I put the web source as dev.tar.gz and copy it to source on my computer. I'm gonna run code period, just to open up Visual Studio Code where I have the sneak plugin already installed. So if I go over to sneak, it's going to start scanning for vulnerabilities and it's got two main scanners. The first one's gonna be the open source security, which goes super fast. It just looks at all the libraries that are used. And we can see two vulnerabilities in the fast XML parser, the prototype pollution and regular expression. And it's pulling that from the package lock.json, just saying this version is being used and it's vulnerable. You should look into it or update it. But the real good thing is going to be the code security module. At least that's my favorite thing about the product because it's actually gonna scan how your code is used and show you the vulnerabilities. Like we can see 11 vulnerabilities in index.js. If we went to the problems, we get a bit more of a description down here, like two NoSQL injections, three path traversals, 
um, telling us we should disable the X powered by header. There's just a lot of good information here. And if we look at it from the code um, security standpoint and click on it, it's gonna tell us also um, ways we can patch it, right? Here is a NoSQL injection, but it's not one I knew about. It's in the API purchase order or PO slash ID. So this is in the URL and we're just doing a MongoDB query. Let me just um, change this slightly so we can see it a bit better. And we're just doing find by and then saying request.parameters.id. So this could be injectable in the same way as our username. And it's telling us to just make this a string. So let's look at the other um, NoSQL injection. Let's see, that's send file, send file. Here we go. So this is the one where we are doing actual injection into the user and we see the find one, username, password. And if we look at password, it tells us the whole flow here. So if I click on 48, it says, hey, it's getting the password from line 48 and it's flowing into here. And it's highlighting all the places where it's used and there's no sanitization. So you can look through it and see if essentially password just comes straight from the request.body. And it's saying to fix it, we should just make this dot to string. And if it was dot to string here, even if we passed it um, this JSON object, it would flatten it and treat the whole thing as a string and not be injectable. So there is Sneak showing you both the vulnerability and a good way to patch it, right? And it shows a lot more. I'm sure, let's see, uh, if we go sweet fixture, hard coding values that could be a secret. So this looks like it's in one of the libraries used has an AWS access key. Um, it's an example key. So I think this is just a complete example not being used, but it does highlight things that are in use or secrets that are in the application that you may not realize. And there's example key right here. So this is definitely not a real key, but I have found keys and just libraries um, through this, right? And again, Here's one that's a potential um, denial of service, but you can see all the vulnerabilities it is finding in this code, right? But enough of hunting vulnerabilities, this video was about actually exploiting them. So let us um, make a new directory. I'm just gonna call it ATK because I'm not creative. It's gonna be standing for attack. And then I'm gonna touch and we'll call it exploit.py and open up VS Studio code in this directory. And I can close this one. And now let's start our Python script. And the first thing we do is of course, import the request module because we're gonna make web request in Python. And then the next thing I'm going to do is create a function, just test login. And then we'll do payload. And you can see um, GitHub Copilot is suggesting this code for me. Uh, let's just fix this up. So we wanna go to dev.stalker.htb. I think that was it. Um, dev stalker htb, that is the domain, slash login. And then for this, um, I'm gonna take the data out and we can say request post URL and JSON is equal to payload. And then I'm going to do a r.raise for status. And this means if the server errors out, it will just cause an error. Um, and have our code stop, right? Then the next thing we can do is say, if error is in r.text, then we return false because the um, payload was not, like the login was unsuccessful, right? And then we can say return true here because if error is not in r.text, the login was a success. And again, I'm just showing right here, um, this is a success login, you see, no word error right here. If we made this invalid, we have login error. So now I can just do um, payload is equal to, and let us just copy this. And I actually don't wanna make this a string. Let's see this, and we need one more there to make this valid. And I think we could even go one step 
and make this a bit prettier and showcase it. Like this, right? Let's see, password, this should be unindented. Will that work? Let's just print payload and see if it works. I F5, hit um, enter, and we see it indeed does. So now I can say if test login, payload, print success, else, print failure, right? So when we run this, we see failed, and I'm gonna change this to something that's successful. So we'll do begins with A and hit enter, and we see success. So now we have the basic thing of our attack. So what we should do first is create another function called get username. So we'll do def get username. And actually before we do this, we should probably get um, the length of the username. And I haven't talked about this yet, but I mean, it's regular expression. So we can easily showcase this. Um, let's see. So what we're going to do here is check for how long this username is. And this is only gonna work because there's one username in this. Um, if there were multiple usernames, then you may have to get tricky. It's The username is a really hard one to um, exfil just because of how we're doing it. Um, it's really good for getting passwords when you know the username because you know there's only gonna be one password that goes to that user. But for the sake of explanation, we're just gonna treat the username like this. So we're going to create a regular expression that matches everything. So A to Z, A to Z, zero through nine. And then if we do this bracket, it's gonna say, um, it's gonna go on for one character then two characters, then three characters, then four characters, then five characters, then six, then seven, and now eight is a failure. And I think if we said started with seven and ends with, now one is gonna be failed, two, failed, three, five, six, and seven. So now this string is only gonna match um, on seven, which means this field is seven in length. So this is gonna be the payload we use. So let us copy this, paste it in, move payload, this line. And I probably should make this like one line. Now that I look at it, it looked clean, but now I don't like it. Username comma, maybe I want it two lines and this will look better. I just don't want this payload to like take up half the screen. There we go, that should be fine. So that is our payload. And what we want to do is put a number here. So I'm gonna put this in I and in um, an F string, if you wanna put a bracket, it's actually two brackets. So two brackets is equal to uh, printing a bracket. So what this is gonna do now is put a number in here. So we can say for I in, we'll say range of one to 64, um, or we can do 128. So we'll be able to go 128 characters for total enumeration. And I just want to print payload. And then we can comment this out and I can say get length username. And all I wanna do is see the payload and my number increasing, um, which I actually don't see it. We see regex, oh no, I do, 120, there it is. Um, this dollar was throwing me off, I was like, it's a variable, but no. We can see that is increasing. So now we can just say um, if, test login, payload, return I. So now, as soon as it hits a valid one, it's going to return and we can print, um, I shouldn't call that count, I should call it length username. Length username like that. 
of fix the typo, L-E-N-G-T-H. And now we print, and at seven, it gets us the length. So that's how we know how long this username is. The next step is going to be um, actually doing the brute forcing logic. And before I do that, let's wrap this in um, a try except. So actually, let's, let's do try, then accept exception as E, and we can raise E. And here we can say raise exception, um, length username not found, sure. And this should be after this. So what I'm doing here is if we ever go through this whole thing, I want to raise an exception. So now if I do a try, we can do accept exception, print E. And let's say our length was only four, right? When I run this, it's going to say length of username not found, or we should say um, unable to get length of username. So this is just a good way to handle um, exceptions, right? And let's do, if we broke the HTTP request up here, I'm just gonna say data payload and send it, we probably would get a completely, no, we didn't. Um, let's see, different, the domain doesn't exist. We just did .hp and now the exception is going to be an HTTP connection, right? So if we didn't use all this exception handling, we just know it failed somewhere. We didn't know the exact failure. And I find this being a more crucial thing is a lot of places start going to like Cloudflare and things like that. If you don't have proper exception handling, it may just fail. You think it's your code, but really uh, Cloudflare decided to block you and you never printed the error message out. So um, exception handling, I find to be very important when writing Python. So we got the length of the username. Now we want to actually get the um, actual username. So let's do another function of get username and we're gonna pass in the length. I'm also gonna pass in a variable called starts with and we'll say the default is gonna be nothing. And this is just if we know um, the name starts with something, we can just type it in and cheat and get the first few characters. I don't think we're actually gonna use it, but whenever doing Boolean injection, I always like including that. Um, I said with instead of with, there we go. So the first thing we wanna do is start our try loop. And then we can say um, the care set. So I'm gonna do care set is equal to string dot ASCII letters plus string dot digits. And let's import string. And then the next thing we want to do is loop over um, the length. So we know the string or the username is seven characters because we already um, made that here. And let's just get rid of these. Um, squigglies by doing the accept thing. So we know that's going to be seven characters. And then we're going to say for C in caraset, payload is equal to Username starts with, it got relatively close, right? So we create the payload, it's gonna be username, and then starts with, um, we have to make this not equal, or not, not equals, regex, and this goes in quotes. And then we do an F string of starts with, and C, and then close that out. And what are you erroring about? Um, we can put that in double quotes, so it's an F string. I guess we could have just done starts with and plus C, how it recommended. Um, no reason we couldn't have done that. So regex starts with C, 
test login return this, and we don't want to return. We're just going to say starts with is equal to or plus is equal plus equal. So we append C. Okay, and then at the end we return starts with. So after seven characters, we're going to return this. So I think this is going to work. So um, what we're going to do, loop over the length and then loop over the character set, which is all uh, letters and digits, and then put the payload here. And on success, we will print starts with, just so we have um, some debug. And now here we can say get username, length username, and to speed this up, I'm just gonna say length username is equal to seven because we already found that out. No need to send seven HTTP requests to get it. And we have A, and then we're going to take a couple seconds, N, then we're gonna go again, get G, and if you're confused, we can always send this to a proxy. And this is one thing I love doing um, and just looking at the request that way. So in this test login, we can say proxies is equal to HTTP, then HTTP localhost 8080, and then say proxies is equal to proxies. I'm gonna turn intercept off so we can just look at the HTTP history send this and we see it making all the requests. So we can see that's AF, that's AK, AL, AM, and it's just going to keep going down the list until it hits a success, right? So that is how this works. Um, so let's see what the third parameter will be. And we got ANG. And I sped up the video a little bit just because um, I don't want to keep you waiting forever, but we can see this isn't the quickest thing. Um, I'm actually going to stop it and then we'll run it, but I'm going to run it with a uh, time so we can see how long it takes. So I'm going to time um, python3 exploit.py and let's just do that on a clear screen. I'm going to pause the video, we'll resume and see how long this takes, then do the optimization and see how quick we can get it done, down to. And we went seven characters, it printed and goose, but it didn't return yet. I realized I forgot one critical thing that would speed this up a lot. Um, in the actual script, once we append this, we should have a break. So we break out of this for loop because what it did right now is it hit the valid E, but it's still brute forcing all the characters. It's going through the whole character set even though we definitely don't have to. So I am going to fix that one thing before we do the major um, speed boost. And that will be um, getting this down so it's like six to seven requests per character instead of how many is it now? Um, if we do, let's see, a Python three import string, then we can say len string dot ASCII letters plus string dot digits. It's doing 62 requests for every single character right now. But we can get that down to six to seven. I forget exactly the number. I think it's seven requests per character. But still, once it hit this E, there's no reason for it to keep going, right? Um, and Burp Suite may be slowing this down as well. We see three minutes and five seconds there. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to run it again. So V, uh, I'll call it benchmarks.txt, right? So I'm going to say uh, full care set plus burp equals 3M 5S. So this next one, we put the break in. I'm gonna leave burp just so we don't um, ruin the benchmark. And we're just going to run it this way. And now once it hit A, we'll see it immediately goes to the next character. Um, 
K L M N. So after this N, I'm gonna hit up and it's already going to the third character. So this one, I'm gonna guess will probably take around um, one minute and 20 seconds. You can see it's almost done. I haven't done any video ed editing yet. And now I may not even bother pausing the video because we're about to get exactly how long it takes. So we'll say with break is equal to 32 seconds. So we shaved off a full three minutes. Now let's see how much Burp Suite slowed us down because I don't want to keep using Burp Suite. And then after that, I promise you, we will do the full optimization. So let's run this again. And it will probably take, I'm going to guess like 25 seconds. I think Burp Suite, probably around a 10% um, performance difference. So 23 seconds. I wasn't that far off. But we'll do break plus burp. And then with break, no burp is going to be 23 seconds. So now let's get over in the code and kind of explain what we're going to do. Um, we're essentially, instead of doing a um, starts with A, so instead of, let's see, starts with A, we're going to say starts with A, B, C, D and take half of it. And then if it finds it, um, we're gonna take half of that. And we're just gonna keep having the care set until we come down to just one character. So that's going to be the magic performance trick that we do here. But before I do that, I want to make one more function because as I'm looking at this, I'm kind of puzzled how I can do proper exception handling here. If we went through this whole care set and didn't get a match, what is a program going to do? Um, it's just going to return where it's at, right? There's no easy way to set a, um, to do like exception handling here. We could create like a Boolean that says matched. And then like if we did matched is equal to true, then we could say if match starts with um, else return false or something, but that's not a good way to do it. Um, a good way would be to just break this into its own function. So I'm going to say def and we'll say get care username and then starts with, and we don't even need the length here. So we're just gonna say for C in care set, the payload, if test login, um, we can just say, we'll keep the print there. Um, Keep that print and we can say return starts with, or we just return C actually. So we'll return the character. And then here we can just put a exception because we should never hit this because we're not going to call get care username um, on the eighth character because we're already looping the max length. We know it, right? So as long as the character is in our character set, we should never hit this spot of our code. Um, the other piece I need to do is move character set here. There we go. And now we can say in this function, care is equal to get care username starts with, then if care starts with plus equals. So this will be the code we use. And I'm just going to run this one more time and pause the video. Just so you know, this isn't where the optimization actually came from. It's just cleaning up the code, right? So there you have it, 24 seconds, which is very close to or 23 second. I think that may just be the latency of the network. So let's get into the code and do our optimizations here. So we have the um, care set here. And what we wanna do is keep having this care set. So I'm going to introduce a while the length of care set is greater than one, okay? And we're gonna say the guess is equal to the um, care set. And then we're gonna grab the first half of the string. So we'll do length, care set divided by 
two. And if we wanted to, let's see, I'm just going to comment this out and we can print guess just so you can see exactly what this is. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint because I know this piece could be confusing. If we look at guess right now before this line or look at care set, we see it's the full string. I'm going to step over this line and now see what guess did. So guess just took that and divided it in half. So what that's going to allow us to do is um, create a new string and we can just do guess is equal to this plus guess plus bracket. So since I'm still here, I can just go and debug and paste this. And then we look at it and this is the regular expression we want, right? We're gonna say it starts with this. And now we can just copy the exact payload we had used before. So copy, paste, and put that here. Instead of C, we're gonna put guess like that. And we probably should start this with the um, caret for starts with. So that looks good. And then we can say if test login payload. So if it's successful, we're gonna say care set is equal to care set and then length care set two. So we're going to have it again the same way we did. Else, and then we're going to say have it the other way. So if it was successful, then the character is in this string. If it wasn't successful, then we're going to go again, but take the other side of the string. And we're just going to loop around that until we um, get a success. So right here, we can return uh, care set. And I think we want, let's just see what this returns. So run it, it's going to return A. So we probably just want caroset. Um, so if we have this string, which is funky, if we just get one out of it, it's going to get that character. So I'm gonna do caroset one because we just don't want the brackets. So now, let's see, well one, I'll uncomment that. I think our code is ready for testing. So let's do a time against this and see how quick it is. String out of range. Well, it was two, like 1.5 seconds, but we had a error. So I'm gonna run it in this so we can see where that error is. I'm gonna guess it's on this care set. Um, so if I print care set like this, Let's see, what's it going to print? A, and then the second time it fails. So let's just set a breakpoint here and we can see what it is. So this time it was A, the next time it failed. Let's see. So is it failing here? A is out of range. For care. I don't know what's happening here. It's actually failing, I think, on this return. So care set one. Care set is just A. We don't have brackets. Oh, the brackets come from guess. I have no idea what I was thinking there. So care set should just be that. Care set is A. That looks good. We're gonna run it again. 
And I think now it is successfully working. Um, if I just hit the breakpoint and goo, so yeah, it is working. Let's go see if we actually optimize this. Um, hopefully we did. Um, it's always possible we didn't because maybe um, most characters and Angoose could be within the first six of the alphabet, but it doesn't look like that. So we have with optimizations, uh, 13 seconds. So that is how we would um, extract data out of this one character at a time. I guess to make sure we fully understand it, we can go and do the password, right? So I'm going to copy get length username because it's very similar what we want to do. And we'll say get length password. And let's see. Um, oh, the we had one to four because we're only testing up to four characters, right? To make sure we hit that exception. So the username, we know we want and goose. And then the password, we're going to do the same thing we had before. So I'm just going to copy this instead of deleting it and put it here. And goose, like that. And this should be good. And we're gonna say, I'll comment these. And we'll say length password is equal to this and print length password. Have a typo, fix it, and then run it. And I'm gonna pause the video because this will probably take 40 some seconds to run. It was much quicker. We got 32, which probably is gonna be like an MD5 sum or something, right? So. I'm just going to comment that out so we don't run this every time. And we'll want to um, create this function, get password. So we'll say get password length and get care username will be get care password. And then again, just copy this, put it and We'll say get care password starts with, and I'm just going to cheat and we'll say um, that. Because since it's 32 characters, I'm making an educated guess right now that it's gonna be hexadecimal, right? So we're gonna keep all of this, len guess, yeah, that looks good. Username, we just want to put this here and username is going to be Angoose. So I think this is all we need. So we can say get password um, 32. And we're going to run it and see exactly how long this takes. Actually, I probably should print where starts with is. I was thinking it was gonna be much quicker, but instead of seven characters, we have to do 32 characters, right? So here we can print starts with, so we can see it getting all the characters as it goes. So B, then B3, B3E. So here we are extracting the password. Um, while that goes, there's one thing that I hard coded that I'm laughing at myself for hard coding. We have get password. The username probably should be a parameter, right? So let's say get password. We're gonna give it username length like that. And then get character password is gonna be username starts with. So now we can say um, get care password instead of angoose username and username. And here is the password for Angoose right there. So we can say length password, or I can just uncomment this. And we'll say print 
and goose password is equal to 32 characters. And then what we can say is get password and goose length and print and goose password is that. And then I guess we can see exactly how long this takes to dump his whole password. And after this, that will be the video. And there you go. We have successfully extracted the password in 51 seconds and then includes the 32 requests prior in order to identify the length of this password. That will be the video, but before I go, I do just wanna let you know, I created a repository after I recorded this video at IPSEC and it's called just um, ctf-scripts. Uh, if we do CTF scripts, I'm not sure why it's not showing there, but we have the um, exact thing that you saw in this video. And I may make some improvements to it or you can commit and improve it. But as of right now, the initial commit of this is going to be the script you saw in the video. So with that being said, that's gonna be it. Take care and I will see you all next time.